So lengthen the sides of the body, lift the chest and take your shoulders all the way up to your ears, roll them back as far back as you can and as far down as you can. And one more time, lift the shoulders up, make a circle and exhale as you roll them back Flatten the shoulder blades in and lengthen them down. Feel the lift in the chest, feel the opening in the rib cage, and then very gently take your hands together to your chest. Thumbs to the base of the sternum. The rest of the fingers are slightly leaning forward. Close your eyes and then Relax all the facial muscles, especially the eyelids, the corners of your lips. And then finally take the jaw, lower jaw away from the upper jaw. So the tongue should not be touching the roof of the mouth. All these points that we are checking are just the beginning bit to settle us down and prepare us for the class ahead. Carry on lifting the chest. With each inhalation breath, open the chest some more and lift it. And with each exhalation breath, try to release the abdomen and, and do any gripping in the lower abdomen area. Keep the shoulders open, keep the chest lifted, lengthen the neck, lengthen the base of the skull up and then take a slightly deeper inhalation than before. As you exhale, bow your head down, keeping the lift in your chest, drop the palms down on your thighs. And as you raise your head, slowly open your eyes. Okay, let's start this class in child's pose. So basically we will have the two big toes together and the two knees apart. For those of us who are a little stiffer today, you can place the block in front of you or a book or even a rolled up blanket. You can also have like a, something that you have at home, um, such as a throw or a blanket from the sofa. You roll it up in a sausage and you place it just there for your forehead. So two big toes together, two knees apart, and start extending your body, trying to end up with your forehead on that support. The palms are still not placed on the floor so that we can carry on extending the torso, extend the back and the sides of the body. Sit the sitting bones down on the heels. If you cannot sit the sitting bones down on the heels because of knee injuries, you can also place the blanket underneath the buttocks such as this so that you can still press your sitting bones onto something but the knee joints are not affected and that will certainly give you a little bit of height to bring the head down on the ground carry on extending the elbows extending the palms and then place your palms down on the floor make sure that you when you lift your head to take a look at your hands, the little fingers are touching the outer edges of your yoga mat. And then plant those palms strongly on the floor, come up onto all fours and bring your knees closer together. So now they are hip width distance apart. From here, we will tuck the toes under and come into the downward facing dog. So this is the very first dog of the morning or stretch of the morning for our hamstrings. So focus on locking the elbows, lengthening the arms, almost like the armpits don't want to come closer to the hands. And from here, very, very gently, we're going to keep the knees bent and just lift them off the ground Lift the hips off the ground and keep the legs bent for a little longer. 
until you can send all your body weight from the shoulders to the thighs. So from here, once the weight is back and up, feel that someone is pulling you from the outer hips and send the back of the legs back back of the legs back, open the back of the knees. If this is too much for the hamstrings, go back to flexing and stretching a couple of times, but do it two legs together as opposed to one at a time. Let's do them both together, flexing and extending so that there is no discrepancy for the spine, especially if we have an injury in the spine. Last of all, stay with your legs as straight as you can possibly bring them, lift the knees up, lift the thighs up, and then gently walk your feet closer to your hands. If you need to bend your knees to do that again, do that, lift the head and very gently come up. Let's start in Tadasana. Tadasana is the standing pose. So. If you have a wall behind you, just like me, you will uh, be able to place your whole body uh, on the wall. Otherwise, let's imagine that we have that wall behind us. And what we want is to send the heels to that wall or imaginary wall, the back of the knees, the buttocks, the butt creases actually, and the waist, the two shoulders and the back of the head. You can do that imagining there is a wall there or with the actual literal wall by um, your side. And then lengthen the spine, lift the pubic bone up, lower the tailbone down, extend the arms by your sides. And then if you do have, oops, if you do have a wall behind you, you will have the little fingers touching that wall and the shoulders pinned to that wall. So the little fingers are not just here by my side, but they are slightly back behind me. Thighs want to touch that wall, lengthen the buttock bones down, and then from here, keep pinning those shoulders on the wall or imaginary wall and lift your arms up above your head lengthen the arms, lift some more. Lock your elbows, lengthen and lengthen and lengthen. Take the base of the skull up, tailbone down, weight back. And if you have a wall this time around, your thumbs will be touching it. If you cannot touch the wall with the thumbs, we probably need to work on the upper arm muscles to stretch them up and then bring the hands a little bit more back. Upper arms also a little bit more back. But with this action, you don't really want to go on your lumbar. On the contrary, specifically if you have an injury, bring the buttocks down, belly back to the spine and lengthen the sitting bones. Now from here, bring the arms down and we're going to do chair pose or atkatasana now. This chair pose, we can have a block or a book between the hands and we're going to pretend that we have to fold the, bo the block or the book and uh, fold it in half. Not just with the hands and the palms, I mean, my fingers are not scrunching up. I'm not holding the block with my fingers. I am straightening the 10 fingers and pla planting the palms on the sides of the book. But also with the elbows, we want the elbows to work as well. So this is the action we're going to do. Bring the two feet hip width distance apart, lift the block as high as your shoulders, squeeze the block between your hands, squeeze the elbows between your hands. So that would be that action. And then roll the shoulders down. Shoulders back and down. Lift the arms up above your head, keeping that action, strength in your upper arms, and then sit slightly back and down. Sit 
back and down. Keep the lift in your chest, keep your, the lift in the head, the gaze, and in the arms. Inhale and come back up. If there is any discomfort in the lumbar spine, you can do the same action against the wall. Again, you put the feet one foot apart from the wall, lift the upper arms up, lift and then slide against the wall. So your, the waist is going to be protected and the whole back is sliding up and down along the wall. Let's repeat it this time around. And instead of having the hands in front of us and up, we will grip the brick between the hands behind us. So again, extend the arms, grip the brick with your wrists and then lock your elbows. So you want to have long arms. From here, two feet are hip width apart, send the body weight back and lengthen as if you were sitting on an invisible chair. Then last of all, lift the pubic bone up to the navel, roll the upper arms, squeeze the brick, inhale and come back up. Lock the knees and bring the brick back to the center. So this time around, we'll do it in a classical version, which is without any props at all. Again, if you prefer to do that, sliding up and down the wall, you can do that. Otherwise, <clears throat> the idea is that as we reach the maximum level down, we will bring the pubic bone to the navel. So I'm basically tilting the pelvis. I'm not tilting it before I go down, otherwise I get stuck here. We will go down as if I am finding or trying to find that chair behind me and then lift the pubic bone and lower the tailbone more. Let's do that. Same applies if you're doing it against the wall. Lift your arms. Let's pretend we have that block between our hands, between our elbows, send the body weight back. So you should be able to lift the toes from here. Then place them back down for balancing purposes. Sit on an invisible chair, lengthen the buttocks down, lengthen the buttocks down, and then last of all, lift the pubic bone. Pubic bone to navel, navel back to the spine. Keep looking up, keep lifting your arms, inhale and lift up again. Bring your arms down, back to Tadasana. Weight back, buttocks down, pubic bone up. Okay, let us now come into another uh, standing pose, which is called uh, Vrikshasana or chair pose. For this one, we will still have the block. And I will show you again from the front. So I'm sure that you have practiced this pose before, or you have seen it in a lot of photos. It's this pose. It's a balancing pose. Some of us may not be able to balance, in which case you can hold onto the wall or to a chair or to some kind of furniture you've got there. However, just to add a little bit extra challenge, I will have my left hand holding to the support if I need to, but this one, this block or the book right in the root of the thigh. So when I come up, I place my leg here and I will bring the brick right to the root of the thigh. The brick is there so that I can understand the action of the pelvis and pelvic rim. So that bony bit here needs to come away from the block, away from the block so I can turn my body from the right to the left in a more healthy way. So then it's all on the legs. It's not on the, it's not this action. So we spend most of our time sitting, flexing the hips. When we stand up, it's very difficult for us to lengthen the hip flexors. That's why it's usually very difficult to do that action or anything that takes the thighs into a stretch. 
we need that mobility. Specifically, we need health in the, in the hips. So we will do that action to understand the alignment and the correct direction of the pelvis. Let's do this. Bring the right leg up, hold on to something if you need with the left hand. If you have any injuries in the knee and you cannot bring the knee up all the way, up, all the way you can stay with a foot around the um, shin or a little lower than the groin not on the knee joint, however. So grip the outer left hip in, hold on to something, and then take your right leg to wherever you can fit it. Press that right heel into the inner leg of the standing leg, and then bring that book or block or something to the root of the thigh. With that there, whoops, says she falling over. With that there, you really want to now start gripping on the left leg, hip, and taking the pubic bone and the hip bone all the way away from your brick, all the way away. So you're basically lifting the same way we were lifting a moment ago in chair pose. Lift and turn, lift and turn. Then lift your chest. So you've got the pubic bone, the belly button, and the center of your chest. Everything facing the same straight line facing the front. Those of us who can let go of the left arm will stretch that I'm up from the outer ankle to the fingertips. So one long straight arrow. Then bring the arm back down, release the book or the block, and stand in Tadasana once more. Ready to do the other side. So bend and turn the left leg. Grip that outer, left, uh, outer right hip in already. So you don't really want to be sitting on that one. Grip. So that right leg is as straight as it can be. Also, that will give me stability in the hips. Bring the left leg up as high as I can take it and place it inside the groin of the right or the thigh or the shin, wherever the leg reaches. Now send the buttock down, open the left groin and place the book or brick there. Now start lifting the chest and turning your body away from the bent knee leg. Lift the chest more, turn the body away from the bent knee leg. Lengthen the buttocks down. Those of us who can, Take your right arm up all the way and stretch those fingertips. You really want to reach up for the sky. So the anchor is your heel and outer side of the foot on the right side. Fingertips want to reach the sky. Bent knee back, buttocks down, and hip bone moving from left to right. And now bring the arm down. Release the brake, leg down, and stand in Tadasana. Okay, let's now come down to a sitting position. So uh, in this sitting position, again, if you can, um, as a matter of fact, let's do, uh, let's do this chair pose. So we're not going to do the sitting position just yet, sorry. We're going to come into this chair pose where the brick is going to be for my heels or book for my heels, but I will squat all the way down. So in this squatting position, after that, we will come to the sitting pose. So come into a chair pose with the two heels on the brick. Lift the arms up above your head and let's go down. Let's go down all the way. Keep the shins back and then bring the pubic bone up to the navel. But this time around, carry on going down. Carry on going down. 
press the ankles, press the heels on that brick and stay sitting on that block or book. You are basically hovering your buttocks up right above, one millimeter above the brick or book. And if you need to sit, you're going to uh, land on it. However, what I want before you sit down is for you to press the shins back, front of the ankles back, and then release. So now we can take the right leg all the way away from us, keep the bent leg, the left leg bent, and if possible, on that break, if you break a book is not big enough, you can place it on the ground, but press the heel strongly on the ground. And it's almost as if you are still squatting. So my knee is facing forward. What I want is for now to lift my left arm as well as the bent left knee. Lift both things, arm, side of the body, and knee. And then turn a little to the right and hook the elbow inside that knee. Push the thigh in and push with your elbow out. Now turn some more. If you can, swing your right hand to your hip. You can also catch hold of your leggings. Those of us who can, Go a little lower with your uh, left hand, turn the palm from the inside out, and then see if you can swing the hand all the way to find the other hand and catch. Otherwise, stay holding the elbow down and the knee back. The right leg is extending away and I am lifting my chest. Keep the left buttock down on the ground. So you're either binding and turning to the right, or you're pushing the elbow back, knee forward. Inhale, exhale, release. Come back to the center with your head and torso and straighten both your legs. Now we're going to bend the right knee to turn to the left. Extend the left leg away from you. Lift the right arm up above your head and then start turning with an exhalation breath. And then place that elbow inside that knee. So there is resistance. The point of resistance is between the knee and the elbow. One pushes back, leg pushes forward and then swing your left hand behind you. Either catch your leggings and start pressing the chest forwards, lifting it up, bring the right ribs over and beyond that right thigh. And if you can, you will extend the arm, wrap your shin with that left arm, right arm, sorry, and then lift the chest hand to hand, or you can also try catching your leggings as well. So this action is also exactly the same. We are lifting the chest, opening the collarbones and resisting elbow to knee. Left collarbone extends away, and then you can also turn your head and look back over that left shoulder. Extend your arm, come back to the center and extend both legs. Lift the chest and now we're going to come into um, this pose called Supta Baddha Konasana. And in this position, the two feet are together, two knees are apart. And I want to bring my heels as close to my buttocks as I can. So that action of bringing the heels as close to my buttocks as I can will give me a lift in the chest. And the more I press the soles of the feet together, the more the legs will go down. 
this is the, the sitting variation. However, what I want is for us to have the torso on the ground. But understand that the work of the legs is pressing the outer edges of the feet into one another, bringing the heels as close to my body as possible so I have a long spine. Take your um, elbows down, iron the creases at the back of your waist so you have already a long torso, and then move your torso all the way down. With your palms, roll the thighs from the inside out. Lengthen the sitting bones down and lift the pubic bone up. Roll the thighs once more, grip the outer edges of the mat and feet together, knees apart, lengthen the shoulders away from your body. Lengthen the shoulders away from your body. Lift the pubic bone to the navel, navel to the chest. If you can, you can close your eyes. Keep opening the shoulders, keep opening across the collarbones. And then those of us who can, will close our eyes. When you close your eyes, don't release anything around your hip or abdomen area. We will do that in a moment when we support our um, legs with the hands. Extend the legs away from you. Let them release down to the sides and let the arms release down to the sides as well. And then inhale and exhale evenly. Release again any tension in your body. This is the time to relax. This is the time to breathe in and out. You want to keep lifting the chest with each inhalation breath. And exhale and release any tension, discomfort or pain. One more time, inhale. Exhale to release. And then one at a time, bring your hands to rest where they are comfortable on your body. One at a time, bring your knees up to your chest. Roll over onto the right hand side, staying curled up. And then use your left hand to push yourselves up into a sitting position, bringing the head up last. Then take a bow to thank your body and mind for being healthy enough to allow you to do this yoga session today. And thank the teachers before us who showed us the way so generously.